so you can match the buttons with the doors, really adding that contrast, a little bit of sexiness. What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review on a device that I picked up or not a review. Wow, there's a hawk. You don't see those very often in New Jersey just flying around the highway. God, those are beautiful birds. Hawks? Okay, let me put a disclaimer out there before we jump into it because I know where you're going to go. Okay, so the review that I'm going to do today is an actual, the first time I've ever seen this done on a 3D print where they do an inline dual battery 18650-250C. Usually you don't see this because this is the type of style. Whenever you see me go live, people always wonder, Jay, what are you vaping on? You know, you always own these 3D print jammies. I just like 3D print. Like, that's literally what I use is 3D print. That's not saying that I don't like other boxes because, well, I went to AC this weekend and look at what I took. And... Take a look at that battery life. Dual 21700, we all know about this mod. We've talked about it several times, but apparently some people have issues with the doors. And that kind of goes into what I'm about ready to say here. So with Rebel Vapes. I can't tell you how many times I get emails or hear things from Hazers about while well, they had a problem with the Rebel, and I'm sure there's going to be comments down below, which are welcome. I have no problem with that, but I've heard stories about how people have had issues with Rebels and the button falling out or something going wrong with the chip or the mod itself, so they contact Rebel and then Rebel doesn't contact them back, and I'm not defending them by any means, but what you have to understand is Let's just say you go with something like the, the Avdillo, right, by UL. They make the box, they make the chip. So if something goes wrong with the chip on a DNA-type box mod, do you really think it should be the responsibility of the company that has it all together, or should it be the responsibility of the DNA? Unless, of course, the box was responsible for the way that the chip shorted out. Now, I know I'm going to get shit for that. I know it. I know it. And there's not really many other things where you could factor that in, except for, let's just say you buy a brand new Camaro, right? And it's got the stock engine in it. And you're like, you know what? I want to put the Z06 in it. Nope, that's, a, that's, a, that's both Chevy. That wouldn't work. This is so hard because I can't think of another field. So let's just say you buy, oh my God, I don't even know how you would go with this. Okay, I got it. So you got a car, your transmission blows. It's not under warranty anymore. So the transmission that was put in was made by, or re redone by Jasper. When you have a problem with that transmission, do you go back to the dealership or do you go back to Jasper? You go back to Jasper because those are the people that put the transmission in and those are the people that rebuilt the transmission. So if something goes wrong with the Rebel and the chip, I don't think that Rebel should be responsible for that chip. I really do not. I. Same thing with Ginger Vapor. I think that's with any company or Vapor's Cloud, uh, Bogan, and um, Dafo with the Odin. If the chip goes bad, you should essentially just take that chip out. And if you don't have any experience with soldering, it's very easy to put a chip back in as a replacement. Proprietary chips are a bit different. I, I feel maybe there are going to be a lot of people that are going to validate that. But a lot of the times, there's people that have dropped their mods and then they want to go to Rebel and say, listen, I dropped it and I cracked it. Can you put this under warranty? No. Why would I warranty something that you dropped? Now, if a button falls out of it. Yes. Like, not from dropping, just falling out. Like, I have the original DNA 250, not C, that Rebel ever made. Literally, the first one. And I love that mod. But guess what? My button finally took a shit. After 685,000 hits. You heard that right. 685,000. Should they be responsible for it? I, I don't know. Not after all those hits, man. That's a lot of pressing on a piece of plastic. But favorite mod, it's sitting on the shelf behind me. I'll show you. You see it? You see it sticking out now? So the only thing that I could really do with that is, I don't know. I feel like there's something that I could do that would stop it, but I love this mod. Being that it's used so much, do I... And I've, I've went to the 250C, which the button is more stiffer. The point I'm trying to make is I don't think that they should be really responsible for something that is that used. Anyway, 
let's move on. We spent a little bit of time about that, but I know that I, I know that that's about five minutes of chatting, or I know that's about four minutes of chatting. I just really wanted to give you my perspective on that because this is a rebel device. Now I got this the other day when I was crowdcasting on Patreon, and I, I'll see if I can pull that video and then extract how I reacted when I got it because I was super pumped up. I've never seen a 3D print like this. So, of course, the box is open, and that's because, well, when I got it, it was actually shipped out, shipped out December 13th, and I know that there's other people in the States that got this. First time I've ever seen it. I don't want to waste any time. Let me show you around the box. It's going to remind you of a Vaporesso Gen 3 style, but 3D printed. No one I know has ever made anything like this. So, without further ado, let's flip it. All right, all right there, Pickle Dick. Let's do it. What we're looking at is the Rebel box. Doesn't really matter anything on the outside. It's just like every other product they have. So let's just go ahead and open it up and let's go over this. Now, keep in mind, I did open this up and take it out of this package. I didn't use it at all. So it should be essentially brand new. All your, again, all typical Rebel stuff. We're just here for the box mod. Here we go. Take a look at this. This is 3D printed. Now, with 3D printing, one thing you'll always notice is lines. What that is, is how it's sanded down. You could essentially remove those and make those smooth. Really depends on what type of 3D printer they're using, what type of material, what's the filament, so on and so forth. But what really intrigues me about this is I've seen a lot of mods. Like, this really reminds me of the Vaporesso Gen 3, but in a 3D print configuration. Another large thing that I'm usually concerned with when we're talking about DNA 250s, dual battery jammies, even d dual battery DNA 75Cs, is the fatness. I'm so used to this type of design. Again, this is a Rebel. Been using this religiously. Got about 23,000 hits on it. Nothing too crazy. But I'm just used to the way that this feels. It's just natural. Because you got two batteries like this. You've seen the Odin. Anything that has two batteries side by side. But you never really see them in line like this. So it makes it more thinner. Not so robust in the pocket. The height doesn't really matter. Doesn't really apply. But I feel like they still could have made this a little bit smaller. And let me explain why. So right here you have a door. Again, you see this a lot on 3D printed. This pops up. And then there it is. But check it out. they got little magnets in it. And usually with box mods that are 3D printed, you'll come across this a lot. See that? My magnets are now gone. Very easily to put back in. You just basically put them in a crazy glue, make sure they're the right polarity, and then that's it. Well, this has little tiny ones. They're kind of all over the place. There's no symmetry to them. Well, there kind of is. Well, I don't know. This is, in fact, though, a prototype, so it may change, but I doubt that. Because of the size of a DNA, what usually bothers me with a lot of these is this could be thinner. Now, this, this I believe this was used by Alex, so just keep in mind there may be some wear on it, but it's really a presentation, not so much a review. Well, it is a review whether he wants it or not. I don't care. He's just going to have to deal with it. 3D printed the whole tray. You see that? It's one piece. Don't like these gold plated jammies. Alex, you need to change that to like silver. Let, let's not cheap that, okay? Gold plated screws? Come on. What are we, eight? So there's that. Now, what could happen is in theory he could make different doors for this so you can mix and match and then put those doors in. So not only do you have, this is what I really care about, is the snap. But there's magnets in here so it lacks a snap. What they could do is they could add a little notch here. And I am going to give him advice just because he takes care of me so it's fine. A little bit of a snap. So if you look over here, my magnets are absolutely trash. But when I put it in, if you watch, it doesn't just go in. It actually, you see that? It's a little bit too big, so when I push down, let me zoom in a little bit here. This is a lizard, of course, but when I push down, you see that? That snap. You can do that here just for a backup plan or contingency if these magnets do fail, which they probably will. And that has nothing to do with Rebel. That's just plastic and magnets never really go well, unless, of course, you use a type of epoxy. Also, what they should do is change it so this door, I know I'm giving a lot of things that they could do here, but they could change it so this door can come off and then you could swap out both doors for something other than just what they have branded on the side. It's not overly branded per se. It's something that they do with all their box mods. I'm just not the biggest fan of the spade, but I've grown to just kind of 
enjoy it in a sense. So the magnets, I fear, will in fact eventually fall off. For what we could fit on the top, let's see, 25 millimeters and no problem whatsoever. 28 might give you a little bit of residual overhang. Yes, it does. So we have a dual 18650. You could essentially use a 30, uh, 28, but you can see that there is some overhang. 25 is a max that you're going to want to put on top of this. And that's usually a pretty big argument that people have. Now, if they did make this compatible with 30 millimeter, you're not really going to be able to do it with this type of design. You're going to have to make it much fatter. And if you're going to go that fatter, might as well go with the dual 21700. Uh, even using their dual 18650 here, you can see a 25 millimeter does work. 26 will go right to the edge. 27 is kind of pushing it. 28 obviously goes right over. So across the board, they could have changed this. But what this really reminds me of across everything is this right here. See how that's taller? Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be at all when you're looking at it. Let's see if you can see here. Is it? I don't know why. It's a good question. What you could do is a spring type of mechanism are usually a little bit better than these because once they break in after using them for so long, you kind of pry them up and then it may snap at the actual hinge. Take a look at how thin this section is here. They could have made this section a little bit smaller, thus reducing this in size because I feel like there's a little bit of too extra room here. There it is. and looks like we do have a stock theme. So once again, that is the inline 250C by Rebel. Let's bring it back on top. Here we go, back on the top with the inline 250C by Rebel. Okay, this is a little bit different considering what I'm used to using is a totally different shape. So you can see clearly, I got my theme on here. We're rocky. He rocks in the tree top all the day long, hopping and a bopping and singing his song. All the little birdies on J Bird Street love to hear the birdie go tweet, 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 rock and robin. Tweet, tweet, Rock and Robin. Tweet, tweet, lead. All right, here we go. Yes, let's do it. Okay, one of the reasons I have no idea why I just vape there, it's just that everybody's like, you know, if you're going to do or if you want a vape product, maybe you should vape. Okay, the differences, because that's going to be the big question. This or this. Now, before we get into this, these two jammies right here. What I want to explain again is I cannot be responsible if you buy a product and that customer service is not there or it's not existent or it takes forever for them to get a hold of you. I don't know, man. I really don't. I buy a product and I get it because I'm a reviewer. I'm going to get sent it quicker and they're going to respond to me quicker because of my reaction and how I'm going to act on a video. I totally totally get that. There are even hazers that have had problems with Rebels to where it's extremely difficult for them to get a hold of somebody to fix it. It is a small company, so just keep that in mind that if you do get something like this and the chip fails, it's tough. I want to say as a consumer that it should be their responsibility, but there's been plenty of mods, especially high-end, where the chip has failed. That little uh, Zeus X jammy that I was having a problem with that DNA, I had to swap that chip out myself. I I didn't go through Pico Libre to do it. They just designed the box. While I know you're paying, I don't know, man. It's just an extremely gray area. And I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you. But if we're going to compare this to this, because that's the ultimate question. This to me, people would argue and say that this is smaller. While it is thinner, it's still taller and it's still wider. But the depth... I guess it depends on how you're looking at the depth of it. The depth uh, from front to back is large. How compact do you want it to be? The original 250C that's shaped like this just feels comfortable to me. It's fatter where my fingers are, and I just thumb fire. With this, it allows you to really fire it either way. I know there are people that like using a trigger finger to fire it, so this would work better than that one that would feel more awkward. I don't know why no one has made a dual battery inline like this before for 3D print. And if there is one out there, I definitely do not have it. And this whole bottom row right here is essentially all 3D printed. Well, I'd say half over is. I don't know how that, it's like mirrored, so half over this one, everything behind me. It's more like a Lost Vape Paranormal, but 3D printed. And for whatever reason, it feels lighter than this. I don't have an answer for that, man. I Maybe because the way it's shaped. I do like it. I do. I fear the magnets are going to be a problem. 
And considering the way that this door is held on by magnets only, that's going to be an issue. What you need to do, Alex, if you haven't already, or if you make a version 2 of this, a version 1.5, I mean, you could still do this, but epoxy those in. Don't crazy glue it, because epoxy is not like crazy glue. It is literally going to make it one piece, and then it will never be removed. I, I don't know what the downside of that would be, aside from it just never being able to come out. I don't like magnets only holding in a door, whether that is metal, whether that is plastic, it's just not for me. I do like the design of this. Would think it would be much more badass if you could remove that door. And I'm sure if I took it apart, I could probably pop that out because I'm assuming when they print this, it's actually hollow on both sides. They put this door because you could see where the seam is. Like you see it right here and you see it over here. So this is essentially held down held down. Don't hold me down. Don't, don't put my head in the pillow. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe later. We'll talk about it. Figure it out. Send me an email. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot. If this can be removed, because it's not magnets, like I, I can't, I can't get that off. It's got to be glued or epoxied on the inside. Pop that out. Pop the other one out. You could even make this white and black. That would look sexy as shit. And then you make it where the doors look like a regular panel. Now we're making money. Change, you don't even have to change a mod. You could just change the door and add that little lip so it snaps in. Minuscule lip, one millimeter. Of course, in due time, like the lizard, it does break in because it's 3D printed, but that's got nothing to do with the company. That's just because it's plastic. I really, really like this mod. I will legitimately use it for how long? I don't know, but I, I really wish I could get that damn door off. But I don't have a door to swap that out with. It, I'm telling you, Make this white, make this one white, or even like a blue and a black, and make it so the buttons come out. Ooh. If I could swap, because people like customization. You know, think about the Box Mod Mafia. You could add different buttons, different panels. You being able to do that really jacks it up. And you can't do that with this because it's just a back door and just buttons. With this, you have two doors and you have the buttons. So you can match the buttons with the doors, really adding that contrast, a little bit of sexiness. I would probably rate this a 7.5. If you could, no, no, I take that back. If you could swap out the doors and the buttons, I, I, I've been getting on Alex about this. He needs to make it so these buttons are swappable. Because like older mods, you know, if the button falls out, little stainless steel button jammy like Lizard does, uh, like this jammy right here, oh my God, best ever. Because the button will never fail. It's got a groove on the outside. It sits in there. If he made it where the where the doors and the buttons could come out, I would probably rate this an 8 to an 8.5, especially if I had those. But because this door is on and this is magnet, I'm going to have to go 6 to a 6.5. Believe me, I would love to go 8. And maybe that door does come off. I'm sure if I pried it enough, it would, but... I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to put this on the shelf. I'm going to use it for a little bit. We're going to figure it out. But I do know that those magnets in due time, listen, correct me if I'm wrong, but anybody that has had a 3D printed mod, even a lizard, those buttons are not buttons. Those magnets are going to come off. And this is a prime example. You see all that? Those are magnets for the lizard because they fall out. You put them back in. I got to a point, though, where I just don't give a shit no more. I'm just going to snap it in because it doesn't, it, it can't fall out. Like, it's solid. That's not, the way that I do it is I, because this is the V1, my favorite one, but what I do is I just grab the battery and just, see that? So it, it gets the battery in the door off one shot. Cool. Some people hate the exposed battery, but that makes it sexy. Either way, across the board, really super sexy. I, I'm going to go 6.5, maybe a 7 the way that this is designed. I like the feel. I'm just scared of the door. Wish the other door came off. Wish the buttons could come out. You got yourself a sex machine. Somebody rocking, knocking the boots. Somebody rocking, knocking the boots. I've kept it real. Have you?